Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, little apology for the slight delay we had in the beginning, but uh, we are ready to start now. Uh, it's my pleasure to invite you to this exclusive webinar on India UAE trade and investment opportunities in agri and food processing being organized by the Trade Promotion Council of India in collaboration with the Consulate General of India Dubai. This discussion aims to enlighten stakeholders on the recent trends and fast emerging opportunities for trade and investment and business collaboration specifically in food and beverage, food processing technology, and packaging technology segments between India and UAE. For this webinar, we are fortunate to have an esteemed panel with us representing the policy and business space from both countries. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our panelists to you. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Aman Puri, Consul General of India, Dubai, Mr. Saleh Abdullah Luta, Chairman, Food and Beverage Manufacturing Business Group, Dubai, Mr. Suresh Kumar, Chairman, Indian Business and Professional Council, Dubai. Mr. R. Senguttavan, Chairman of Sectoral Committee on Food Processing and Packaging Technology, Trade Promotion Council of India. He's also former Chief Executive Packaging and Printing Division, ITC Limited, and Managing Director, Wimpo Limited. Mr. Sanjay Grover, Vice Chairman of Sectoral Committee on Food Processing and Packaging Technology, Trade Promotion Council of India and Vice President, International Business Division, Kirloskar Pneumatic Company Limited. Mr. Abhishek Potar, Vice Chairman, Food and Beverage Sectoral Committee, Trade Promotion Council of India, and Managing Director, Nan Nani Agro Foods. And Mr. Ashok Sethi, Director, Trade Promotion Council of India. The highly enthusiastic participation in this webinar aptly illustrates the growing importance and significance of India-UAE relations over the years, these relations have in fact been built over at least a millennium of religious, cultural and economic engagement fueled by barter trade and people to people contacts over centuries. When we cut to the present, besides shared geopolitical outlooks, the UAE's vision for a diversified knowledge-based 21st century economy finds strong compatibility with India's thrust to achieve its phenomenal and well-recognized economic potential. The past few years have seen intensified India-UAE engagement at all levels. When it comes to trade, UAE is India's third largest trading partner with bilateral trade of US dollar 59.1 billion in 2019-20, which declined to US dollar 43.3 billion in 2020-21, which we obviously know is an impact of the pandemic largely. UAE has more recently initiated attempts for a broader India-Gulf Cooperation Council dialogue to revive the talks for our bilateral free trade agreement early this year. Early analysis identified around 1,100 products, including washing machines, ACs, refrigerators, spices, tobacco, cotton fabrics, textiles, and leather that can see higher exports through an India GCC deal. In fact, talks for an India UAE bilateral FTA have already begun as per reports. These are expected to help India further expand in the UAE market and leverage it as a gateway to the GCC region and beyond. UAE is the eighth largest source of FDI inflows, equity inflows into India, which were recorded at US dollar 11.12 billion between April 2000 and March 2021. Primary focus areas of investment are services, sea transport, power, construction activities, and infrastructure. Besides this, India has also invited further investments from the UAE in key sectors such as logistics, food parks, highways, ports, airports, renewable energy, and defense. Even as UAE is the fourth largest crude oil supplier, both countries are working together in renewable energy fora, prominently International Solar Alliance and International Renewable Energy Agency. Besides this, they are also collaborating to build a sustainable hydrogen economy. Of late, we are witnessing interest from the UAE and India startup ecosystem as well. PEVC funding from the Middle East and India, Indian startups surged phenomenally to US dollar 7.5 billion in 2020 from US dollar 1.8 billion in 2019, according to Venture Intelligence. As far as Indian presence in UAE is concerned, there are 4,365 Indian companies and 4,862 trademarks registered in the UAE. An invert Indian FDI stock in the UAE amounted to US dollar 6.2 billion, according to Ministry of Economy data. Most Indian companies have invested in 
real string wholesale and retail trade transportation logistics construction financial and insurance activities most importantly india's diaspora in uae is estimated at around 3.42 million which accounts for around 30% of the latter's population coming to the topic of this webinar today india's food exports to uae were estimated at us dollar 1.89 billion in 2020 and imports were at us dollar 363 million last year the two nations made a resolve to treble their bilateral trade volume in food and agritech sectors in the next 5 years india wants to work very closely with the uae as a reliable partner in food security and the uae india food corridor is slated to attract investments of us dollar 7 billion from the uae this recent recognition of mutual complementarities in the fnb sector which is thus far still a relatively unexplored area in the, between the two countries make this webinar both relevant and topical for the industry in both countries now i would without wasting much time like to move on to our esteemed panelists for their views on how they view uh, the fnb and food tech sectors vis-a-vis -vis india uae trade and investment ties to commence this discussion it's my pleasure and honor to invite the honorary council general of india dr aman puri for his initial address over to you sir namaskar hey good morning to all of you uh, the distinguished panelists all the participants it's my real pleasure and privilege to join the trade promotion council of india uh, in this very important webinar very topical recently the prime minister of india has given this clarion call to increase india's exports we all realize and many of the figures have recently been uh, just announced by mr bari so i won't go again into uh, the same i would like to mention certain key points from my side apart from addressing the needs of the indian diaspora here in the uae indian agricultural exporters must highlight and understand the needs of the foreigners who are living here from over 200 nationalities dubai can be a gateway and a springboard for the companies for our products and services in this sector so that we can take our products and services global in that it is important to understand the current needs of the consumers here we have to understand what kind of promotional activities are required so that we can reach out we can explain the value of our products we can diversify our product portfolio for those international consumers based in uae and in gcc for that it is important to have a presence here to be able to appreciate the uh, value which people attribute to organic products and in doing so we can definitely increase our exports here in this region it is also very important to ensure that as indian exporters and as stakeholders in this industry we are able to create clear projects for the ua investment to flow into india what is happening is that we have been talking about the need for facilitating the investment from ua into india but the feedback which we receive from the stakeholders here in ua is that what they are looking for are clear investable projects when we talk about the uh, food corridor we understand that of course uh, the covid-19 pandemic has had a major impact in the way we have been able to take forward those projects in the last 18 months or so but now going forward we must do our best to make sure that we realize this opportunity there is that investable surplus both governments are committed other stakeholders are committed what is needed is clear investable projects to be identified in different parts of india the irritants and the bottlenecks the hurdles to be identified and addressed both by the public and the private sector 
so that we are able to realize the true potential of this relationship. What is also very critical is that we don't look at UAE just as a market of 10 million consumers. We look at it as a springboard for the entire MENA region. As most of you are aware, that Dubai would soon be hosting the Expo 2020, which is slated as the biggest event to be hosted in this part of the world. In the last 170 years history of the Expos, it is the first time that the Expo is being hosted in the Miasa region, which is the Middle East, Africa and South Asia region. I take pride in mentioning that we are expecting for the first time in the 170 years history of the Expos that Indian nationals will be the single largest group of visitors at this Expo. So it is an opportunity for us to make sure that we can use this global platform to increase India UAE trade and investment opportunities especially in the food and agri sector. As Mr. Bahari mentioned, there is a lot of funding coming from UAE into India in agri-tech startups, et cetera. And that is something which we want to catalyze and facilitate. We are all aware how India has become a very fertile ground for the emergence of unicorns globally. The next six to eight months are going to be very critical as India would be seeing the emergence of several unicorns in various sectors and including some in, in these sectors. So this is an opportunity to enable investment to go into these startups, which can actually address the global food challenges, the challenges of growing food in arid conditions like the Middle East, etc. And this is one thing where we must work hard to make sure that we can showcase the best of our startups at this global platform. And that is something which we need to identify the best startups in this sector, pan India, and to bring them here at this global platform. That will enable them to connect with other stakeholders, with their counterparts from different countries, and also to be able to connect with the sovereign wealth funds, PE funds, the venture capital funds, and the other family holding companies based in the UAE. This is also an opportunity for various export promotion councils of India to be present here during the six months and to take the engagement further and deeper with all stakeholders here in the UAE and globally. As you know, 190 plus countries will be participating at this Expo 2020. What we've been informed is that over 50 world leaders at the heads of state, heads of government level have already confirmed their presence in the six month event. Of course, more confirmations are likely to happen in the due course of time. So I would really emphasize for the sector to make use of this opportunity for supporting economic revival in both countries and globally. This is perhaps going to be that one event which will clearly be a harbinger for economic recovery in a post COVID-19 world order. Of course, we heard about our traditional relationship, our civilizational and cultural ties, which go back various millennia. But this is an opportunity to take the relationship to the next level. And we truly believe that India UAE relationship, especially in this, uh, in the food and agricultural sector is at an inflection point and we must work hard to realize the true potential. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your remarks. Now, I would like to request 
Mr. Saleh Abdullah Luta, Chairman, Food and Beverage Manufacturing Business Group, Dubai, to share his views. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, Your Excellency Dr. Aman uh, Buri, uh, Council General of India, uh, esteemed panelists, uh, businesses of India Trade Promotion Council, and friends. Thank you very much for inviting me for this great uh, session to, uh, to emphasize in our objective really from this session is really to reassure our commitment uh, as a group in building this relationship going forward and working as a facilitator with you to support and uh, work together in taking this relationship to the next level. The importance of our trade business, as uh, Mr. Buri has said, that this goes a historical relationship between India and UAE. This is a relationship being, being there for decades. And as I mentioned, uh, the, in a great example of this relationship, here in the UAE, we used to use the Indian rupee as our currency, which is a great proof of this relationship and how it is being developed. And we would like to thank the Indian Trade Promotion Council and Indian Consulate for organizing this, in, uh, this event. Actually, the great success and the development happening in UAE and especially in Dubai, this is because of the support we have from the Indian business community and then being part of this development in the UAE. This, as I said, they've been playing a, a major role in taking UAE to where we are right now. So I think we have a great potential really to develop this relationship even further going forward. When we come to the food uh, sector, it is one of the main sectors in the UAE. It comes number two or number three as an importance for the UAE after oil and gas and uh, real estate sector. So we have a great potential for us to really develop the sectors together because the government is creating a new initiatives to support the sector, especially with the food security important after COVID-19 and the challenges the food sector went through after this pandemic, especially here in UAE and this region because of the limitations of the resources we have when it comes for food production. So I think we have a great chance right now after COVID-19 and after the challenges we went through, as I said, government has created a new initiatives, and one of these new initiatives of seeing the Ministry of Manufacturing being established and advanced technology. This is a one big uh, step the government has taken forward to support the manufacturer in the UAE and really give them uh, a great support going forward. Our role is really to enable this objective of the UAE to be delivered. And this is what we are doing, the Food and Beverage Group and the Business Committee in the UAE, really working as a facilitator between the private sector and the government to really smoothen the way for this uh, relationship to go further and stronger. And the other initiatives government have been taking, I'm sure that all of you know that one of the great initiatives government have been taking is the 100% ownership, which we've never had previously. This is a very strong step government is taking to really promote investment in the UAE. The golden visa, uh, the new manufacturing strategy, taking our manufacturing to a next level. This is cannot be done by the UAE companies alone. We will be requiring a lot of support from the 
international market, and especially from India, as I said, because of the relationships and because of the distance and because of the historical relationship we have. At this time, what we are looking uh, at this time, we have uh, a great uh, also product from UAE and brand, which could be exported internationally to the Indian communities for people who lived in the UAE and been thrown back. So there is a good chance for us to create this joint uh, uh, promotion where we can export some of the UAE products to India. At the same time, we can benefit from the experience the manufacturer in India have, and they can utilize our infrastructure in UAE, from manufacturing to logistics to the location UAE has, and utilizing it as a hub for the whole market in the GCC. As I said, the government of UAE having a great uh, plan going forward to really support all investors, manufacturer, trader in the UAE. And they're coming with all these uh, new initiatives. We have been working with Dubai Municipality with all the authorities to smoothen the way for all the investors and all the manufacturers in UAE to conduct their businesses, to register their products, to uh, ease their distributions and really help them to overcome all the obstacles they see. We will be working with your uh, uh, Trade Promotion Council of India to really look into how can we work together in developing this relationship going forward from utilizing some of the researches we have in the UAE to work together and seeing any specific uh, project or potential we need to work together uh, to develop going forward. In the end of the day, as I said, uh, I do see a great potential be, uh, between our two organizations to work in enabling our members and our companies grow and develop going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nuka, for your remarks. Uh, I now request Mr. Suresh Kumar, Chairman, Indian Business and Professional Council, Dubai, to give his views. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, Virat. Uh, let me, at the outset, uh, thank the Consul General of India, Dr. Manpuri, and uh, his Consul uh, Economic, uh, Mr. Kalimutu, for uh, not just inviting me to join the panel session, but also for connecting me up with the Trade Promotion Council of India. Uh, and I, was, I must compliment the Trade Promotion Council of India for promptly uh, and proactively suggesting that uh, we enter into an MOU that is between the Indian Business and Professional Council and uh, DPCI. I certainly welcome this. I think uh, uh, such an MOU uh, affirms and you know, creates a framework in which we can pursue this further. But uh, I also say that MOUs are good, but not good enough until we achieve uh, actions and outcomes that are measurable, tangible on the ground and, uh, and actually have a follow-up action almost uh, every year, if not uh, you know, more frequently. So in that context, uh, we will certainly be creating uh, a food and beverage forum uh, and also you know, covering agri-processing, packaging, uh, and the, you know, all the related matters. Uh, and we will bring in uh, the who's who in that sector uh, into that forum, and I hope uh, we can work with uh, TPCI to take it forward and achieve those tangible outcomes. So, I certainly welcome this uh, MOU initiative. Uh, I think uh, all MOUs are best pursued strategically, uh, and let me 
illustrate the strategic approach uh, of the UAE. Uh, um, you know, in mid 2010, 2015, you know, uh, there was a lot of concern about food security. Uh, and very quickly uh, in uh, 2018, uh, November, the federal ministry uh, um, created a strategy. And in fact, uh, many consultants from India, many food experts from India, many technology experts from India participated in that strategy. And it, as I was uh, reviewing that strategy, what struck me was the meticulous manner in which uh, uh, specific actions have been outlined there. Uh, and for instance, the strategy defines the national food basket into 18 main elements. And uh, so it has 38 short and long-term uh, initiatives, 38 of them very clearly specified. It's got five strategic goals. So very granular, very precise in terms of domestic consumption. What are the current pattern of consumption? What are the re-exports opportunities? What are the current and projected production capacity, processing and nutritional needs very clearly defined. Um, and uh, so the, the strategy was excellent, but Dubai does one better in one sense. Uh, they quickly announced the construction of a $1.5 billion food park. Again, you know, a measurable outcome. And this was announced in 2019 within a 550 million square foot feet uh, Dubai wholesale city. Uh, it's coming up very near the Expo 2020 site. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's managed to attract the Chinese. The Chinese government announced a $367 million cluster within that food park. So I think uh, the uh, actions and the follow-up that happens strategically is worth replicating uh, in, in the bilateral relationship as well uh, in terms of measurable, tangible outcomes. So I'm really illustrating that the Dubai government, again, followed it up quickly with a food tech valley for research, innovation, new technologies and the like. Uh, because already um, this has been implemented on the ground in terms of uh, you know, um, uh, you know, specifically moving the country. They have they have a target for the UAE in terms of global food security index. So by 2051, they expect to top the index. They moved from 51 in uh, 2019 to uh, 21 ranking uh, globally. Um, you know, Finland, where a small country is number one, so Dubai wants to displace it, or the UAE wants to displace it uh, uh, in by 2051. So very highly aspirational. And I think those aspirations, again, uh, if one were to align, uh, whether it's a country or a trade council, to align with those strategies, then I think uh, actionable, uh, measurable outcomes can be achieved. Uh, I spoke about technology, uh, the focus on technology. In the food sector, for instance, they've already uh, got vertical farming. And they've realized that vertical farming reduces water consumption by 95%, which is a staggering number to, uh, to contemplate. So vertical farming, smart farming, aeroponics, um, you know, hydroponics, uh, use of artificial intelligence, internet of things, automated farm machineries, soil humidity sensors, crop tracking drones. Uh, all of this in the last three years has resulted in a 53% increase in output. Uh, I'm illustrating that uh, the actions happen very quickly. You know, earlier uh, it was said, and quite rightly, that uh, we have a history of very strong relationship. Uh, you know, it goes back uh, millennia and it cuts across trade, uh, specifically uh, across sectors, trade sectors, uh, and it has been strong, sustainable, and it is based on credibility, 
you know, a sense of trust between each other. All of these open doors, ultimately actions will have to follow after the opening of the doors. And I think that is the, that's the area, for instance, uh, uh, we need to focus on. Uh, as a business council, uh, you know, in 2015, uh, the UAE and India entered into a strategic partnership uh, agreement covering a number of sectors, trade, investments, maritime security, uh, in alternate energy, food and food processing, agri-processing. Uh, so a number of sectors were identified. Uh, um, so there is need to have a strategy for India, UAE, trade and investment relationship a strategy as meticulously crafted as the, you know, much in detail with specific initiatives that can achieve. Uh, the announcement that was made in 2015 of a $75 billion FDI into India, up to $75 billion of FDI into India. I mean, we are doing well in terms of FDI from the UAE, FDI from around the world. India is, uh, you know, had a phenomenal growth in that segment of foreign direct investments into India, but we can do better and more. Uh, and I think the food sector is right. The agri-processing sector, the f &B sector are right. Uh, DP World, for instance, uh, in the UAE uh, created uh, an f &B, uh, cluster within the DP World data, you know, and it's interesting. The uh, DP World crust cluster uh, has uh, an investment made by them uh, over a 1.55 million square meters, a dedicated FNB cluster in Jabal Ali, with $3.6 billion of food stuff uh, accomplished to date. Uh, food stuff, uh, food stuff, livestock, agri products. So they have, uh, as of the end of last year, 4,700 port customers and 550 food companies resident in that FNB cluster from 70 countries. So uh, the infrastructure, the opportunities are tremendous. The market for FNB, you could argue, is actually getting a little crowded and highly competitive. But the growth momentum is so strong, re-exports are so strong, uh, the market is growing faster than the number of uh, entrants that are coming into the market. So it's a very, very promising segment, remains a promising segment and an opportunity. Uh, it's an opportunity in both directions. Uh, for instance, uh, the UAE investors, I mean, UAE, uh, I'll share some of my insights. The, the UAE is a federation. I mean, we all know that uh, very well. That's, it's a federation of seven emirates, but all the seven emirates are autonomous. They invest individually. Some of them are hugely capital surplus like Abu Dhabi. Some of them uh, have sufficient capital surplus like Dubai or for instance, Russell Kema. And all of them have their own investment authority. Russell Kema has an investment authority. Dubai has the investment corporation of Dubai. And Abu Dhabi of course has uh, some of the world's largest sovereign wealth funds, Mubadla, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, ADIC and the more recently ADQ, which is specifically focusing on the food and beverage sector, mm -hmm. uh, specifically focusing on the agri processing sector as well. Uh, they've made a few investments, uh, some large and some uh, strong investments, and they have continuing interest. They've actually created two subsidiary companies, Agtia and uh, uh, one more, which uh, is geared towards also technology, agri-processing technology. Now, this is an area of strength for India. You know, our technology uh, progress, agri-tech, food tech, uh, are worth uh, bringing to this region, uh, some of the best technology uh, that we can develop, uh, and uh, also discuss with the users on the ground here, some of the institutions, some of the agri FNB segment uh, customers as to what more they need. They're forever thinking ahead. You know, uh, 
what can be done in vertical farming, for instance, uh, you know, with regard to specific technology, how it can be tweaked or tuned for this specific region. Similarly, uh, you know, I think there has been a certain amount of concern, especially during COVID, but even earlier, uh, in terms of the shipping lines, the you know the uh, passage through uh, the Gulf and the like, and uh, so there is merit in uh, you know the capacity being created for last mile production, warehousing, storage on the ground in the UAE, uh, and this is again can be a win win for. Indian manufacturers, this can be a win-win for Indian agriculturalists, Indian agri-sector, etc., of doing some amount of last mile production, last mile packaging, last mile delivery capability on the ground in the UAE. I think these are investable propositions. These are investable projects for which, uh, you know, given the capital surplus nature uh, of the UAE, uh, including some of the major emirates, uh, funding and capital infusions should not be an issue. You know, His Excellency spoke earlier about uh, you know investable projects that the UAE authorities are looking for, that the UAE companies are looking for, the UAE investors are looking for, and I think uh, a way by which it can be thought of out of the box, so it can be a win-win for both geographies, is the way to approach it. Uh, and I think. Um, the uh, interesting uh, dynamic here is that the UAE uh, at the federal level prepares the policy strategies. Uh, and the UAE federal budget is actually quite small. The UAE federal budget is US dollar 15 billion because it's a relatively small economy and small uh, country. But RDI itself and you know has about $800 billion. And if you add up all the sovereign wealth funds, you've got something close to uh, uh, 1.2 trillion. So capital surplus nature, and this is growing at about 18% per annum. So capital surplus nature will continue for a long time, even when oil and gas run out or uh, you know are replaced by other energy sources. And the UAE is thinking ahead for, the, for that day. You know, they're already diversifying, they're already investing in alternate energy. Yeah. And so if there are methods and plans that combine the strategic elements in the UAE with India's own strategic requirements to address this region, I think uh, we as business councils, we as, you know, uh, Trading partners need to invest in creating that strategy, creating and implementing that strategy. As uh, you know, uh, HSBC famously said, uh, "Think global, but act local." And I think uh, there is a compelling case for that here. Uh, um, I would finally, uh, therefore, uh, uh, conclude by saying that. Uh, this strategy preparation is one, you know, and that can be constantly uh, and dynamically revised. Uh, a strategy and a blueprint uh, for trade and investment flows, specifically in the FNB sector, and would be happy uh, to work with the TPCI in that respect. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You speak uh, from a wealth of experience and knowledge, as you can see. And uh, we indeed at TPCI also look forward to collaborating with you. Uh, I would now like to request uh, Mr. R. Sanguttavan, Chairman of Sectoral Committee on Food Processing and Packaging Technology, Trade Promotion Council of India, and former Chief Executive, Packaging and Printing Division, ITC Limited and MD, Vimco Limited, to give us his insights on the packaging industry and its scope between the two nations. Um, good morning, good afternoon to uh, the esteemed panelists uh, and uh, participants of the event. Uh, first of all, my compliments to Trade Promotion Council of India in organizing a very 
a lively session on collaboration and trade between India and UAE. I would be covering uh, specific to packaging sector relevant to the agri and food processing industry. And what are the competitive nature? What are the development of this sector in India? How, how competitive they are, the international reach, and what uh, uh, the developments have taken place in this sector between India and UAE, and what are the future opportunities? Uh, briefly about packaging uh, industry in India. Packaging is one of the strongest growing segments, witnessing steep growth a fifth largest sector of the Indian economy. Packaging industry expected to grow from 50 billion roughly to 205 billion US dollar by 2025, registering a CAGR growth of 26.7 annually. Food processing is the largest consumer of packaging at 45% of the total packaging consumed, followed by pharmaceuticals 25% and personal care 10%. Increasing demand from the above end use segments, uh, creating huge potential for packaging demand. Uh, during the pandemic, the demand for packaging for grocery, healthcare, and other e-commerce transportation has increased exponentially. Flexible packaging is the rapidly developing segment of the industry. Properties of film, paper, and aluminum foil provide a range of protective characteristics that are required. Uh, for enhancing the self life for the food industry, food packaging industry. Uh, key players in India, uh, the well developed, uh, it, it's a, a packaging is a well developed industry in India with uh, several multinationals and domestic companies well established, uh, with dedicated in house RD facilities, pursuing research based, based innovation focused on consumer benefits and delight healthy competition between local and international players to deliver innovative and sustainable products. Indian packaging industry has a global reach, has emerged as a market leader for uh, FIBC and uh, BOPT films. Indian packaging industry exports materials components, uh, several material components which are used in the packaging industry. Industry employs several state-of-the-art technology thus raising the bar for Indian packaging industry. China used to be the largest and still is the largest exporter of packaging material globally. The pandemic driven isolation of China has forced the packaging companies to revisit their supply chain vulnerabilities, thus accelerating the sourcing to other countries and India being the major beneficiary of the same. The factors promit, uh, prompting this set are uh, the lower cost of manufacture uh, manufacturing in India compared to European subcontinent, uh, availability of skilled labor, potential in the segments like processing foods, hard and soft drinks, fruits and marine products for exports. Food processing is a sunrise uh, sector in India. India's food ecosystem offers huge opportunities for investments because of the growing growth led by food retail sector favorable economic policies and attractive fiscal incentives. The food and groceries market in India is the sixth largest in the world, constitutes 65% of the total retail market in India. Uh, government policies are very supportive for food industry, sanctioned 41 food parks across the country, 22 of them are operational as we speak today. According to Ministry of Food Processing Industry, by 2025, India's food processing industry is estimated at half a trillion dollars from the current $160 million, registering a growth of 21% CAGR. By 2030, Indian annual household consumption is expected to triple, making India fifth largest consumer. A booming in food processing segment represents growth opportunity, huge growth opportunity for Indian packaging industry. Key strengths for the Indian food processing and packaging industry are uh, Agri commodity hubs, large, largest producer of several agro commodities, uh, huge consuming base, consumer base, uh, fifth largest economy and one of the fastest growing economy in the world. Uh, conducive proactive policies and attractive fiscal incentives, and PLI scheme and uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat. India and UA business relations and packaging connect. India, I mean, se several of these uh, statistics have been spoken by 
Mr. Bari. So I will skip them. Uh, except to say India is the third largest exporter destination for uh, UAE and UAE for UAE India is the second largest trading partner in 2018 with 36 billion US dollar on non-oil trade. Uh, the, uh, you know, FDIs are uh, quite, uh, qu quite uh, evolved. UAE invests about uh, 1300, 14, uh, 13 to 14 billion US dollar in India and Indian investments in UAE are 85 billion US dollar. And, uh, uh, there are several companies in, in, in UAE already established and well-connected logistics. Uh, the uh, Indian packaging sector has already invested in UAE. Some of the companies well represented there are Uflex, Srinath, FlexiPack, Amber Packaging and Positive Packaging. Uh, packaging exports uh, from India to UAE includes flexible packaging and uh, raw material for corrugated board. Uh, briefly about exports between UAE and India, it is a busy chart, just the last line alone. Um, the United Arab UAE's uh, uh, imports from across the world has degrown uh, by 1.37% in CAGR terms between 2015 and 19. During the same time, Indian exports, uh, I mean, uh, imports from India has grown at uh, 8.4 CAGR. Uh, India is currently the second largest uh, uh, supplier of uh, food and beverage products uh, to UAE. The Indian packaging industry is, uh, as I said earlier, is expected to grow at over 25% CAGR annually. Rapid growth in the market is driven by pharmaceuticals, food and beverage industry. Huge investment in food processing, personal care and pharmaceutical inducer industries are creating scope for expansion of the packaging market. Uh, the packaging industry in UAE is expected to grow at 4.6% annually over the next few years. Uh, the growth from increasing demand for secondary packaging is fueling the uh, packaging sector. Focus on sustainable packaging is another key initiative which is driving the consumption. Investments in innovative packaging and design, both the design and material are the critical components Future potential for trade and investments, uh, robust collaboration in food and agri technology sectors with established, dedicated, and food corridor between India and UAE, integrated food supply ch chain solutions, agri trading platforms, food processing units, and uh, the PIAI Association is engaged in formulating policies and guidelines to augment India's export potential in the international market. Advantage UAE, world-class logistics and transport infrastructure, strat strategic location to reach Middle East and North African markets, uh, logistic infrastructure forms to poke and secure food supply corridor, which many of the earlier speakers spoken about. Collaboration, further collaboration where uh, the possible opportunities involves in developing sustainable packaging solutions, biocompostable packaging for quick service restaurants, environment-friendly packaging solutions for e-commerce and food delivery services. Opportunity to reduce food waste in India is estimated to be over 12.5 billion US dollar. Uh, leverage in Indian software expertise, uh, digitalization and in industry 4.0. Uh, between this and sustainability are going to be the driving factors for the next decade. And those who are ahead of the curve will reap the benefit of uh, reap the benefit going forward. Finally, to conclude, India and UAE sharing common goal on sustainability in areas of sustainability. There are several advancements by Indian companies in the in in recycling and compostable packaging. India can be a hub for sourcing cost-effective MDO PE films, barrier coated films, barrier coated paper based packaging solutions as well as flexible packaging. Uh, with this, uh, I conclude that uh, give, given the huge opportunities, I'm sure uh, Indian uh, uh, and UAE industries and the packaging sector will involve themselves uh, to see the opportunities uh, for mutual benefit and growth uh, in the next decade. Thank you. Sir, can you uh, close the presentation, please? Yes.
Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights on the packaging sector. I'm sure industry will find them useful to understand the potential and how to explore it. Uh, I will now invite um, Mr. Sanjay Grover, Vice Chairman of Sectoral Committee on Food Processing and Packaging Technology, Trade Promotion Council of India, and Vice President, International Business Division, Kiloska Pneumatic Company Limited, to talk about the food technology segment and its uh, potential between India and UAE. Uh, thank you, Mr. Virat. Uh, Honorable Excellency, uh, my esteemed panelist here, and uh, uh, interesting audience uh, sitting across. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, good afternoon to you who are sitting in India and good morning to you who are sitting in Dubai or the, the part of UAE. Uh, so, uh, first of all, at the outset, as uh, you know, uh, I think TPCI deserves a big compliment uh, for organizing this uh, uh, wonderful program on food, especially. I won't use the word food security, but I'll say food as a whole. Uh, because uh, especially during the, the pandemic time, the last 18 months or so, uh, we have seen, you know, the real importance of food for the living being, forget about human being. So, so really it has, uh, you know, uh, give us a deep insights for all of us as individuals, uh, you know, irrespective of who we are, where we are, what we are. But the food becomes uh, the most critical part of our, uh, you know, <clears throat> thinking and part of our life. Of course, we all know this. Uh, coming back to uh, the, the discussions today, uh, I believe uh, I would, you know, I come from an industrial background, a corporate background, so I touch base uh, the industrial perspective on this issue. Uh, before I do that, uh, I would like to split my discussion into, uh, you know, three important uh, sections. Uh, one being, you know, uh, what is the India story today? And let's, because the audience on the other side of the border should uh, get some feel, you know, oh, what we are today. Second is, you know, between India and UA, what is the, the, the food vision or the food security vision we call us, you know, we share that common vision. And of course, third is on the on the India and UA, uh, the food and agribusiness opportunities in terms of, you know, industry perspective. Uh, so to start with the, you know, uh, what India is today and what India is about uh, on this side of the, you know, the food part. Uh, as we all know, you know, India has a large arable land. And uh, we have a huge resources of uh, agriculture development. And we also be one of the largest producer of milk in the world. You know, for the people, uh, uh, for the knowledge, I believe we handle almost around 18 million kg of milk per day, which is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we also know that we are one of the largest, second largest producers of fruits and vegetables in the world. We are also one of the third largest producers of grains and fish. And uh, we are also having one of the largest, uh, you know, it's, uh, resources of the livestock, uh, we talk about it. And and we know India is, is a big country. India has a huge uh, amount of resources. So there are a lot of natural resources here. We have a huge talent of labor, huge, uh, you know, I'll say, set up in terms of uh, food processing factories or food processing units. So so there is there is an amount of resources which are really available in India. And I believe, uh, you know, uh, 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 there has been a very concerted effort by the government of India uh, to really uh, get this segment, food uh, processing, I'll say particular, uh, get a push or a focus on this. Uh, you know, that is a reason probably we find that there is a 100% FDI now which has been announced into the food processing and the retail sector. So that's, I believe, a way forward the, from the, the, the government side. And also we see that there are a lot of... Uh, uh, thought process and actionable uh, schemes which have been announced. For example, I believe there are around eight mega food processing parks which are actually in action, and I, and there are many more to come. I'll say for that. And uh, uh, the the other part which we find here is that from Indian perspective is there is an exemption on the custom duty. Uh, you know, for the exemption uh, of the goods which need to come to India, which are to be used in the 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 processing of the foods and all uh, industry. And to add to that, uh, there is a incentivization in terms of that PLI scheme. We heard that, you know, that has been, we started from one segment, it has gone to more than 10 segments now. And, and food has become so critical, so important that even the PLI, which is the, the production linked incentive, has been announced by the government of India. So, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, India has, a, 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 you know, the potential, a market, which probably the world can look at it. There has been now, 
invites, you know, there's a warm invite from all of us to come to India, set up your bases, set up your industry. There is a change, there is a change which is happening around. Uh, now, moving forward from here, uh, you know, uh, the second part I would like to touch upon is, you know, the India and UAE. Uh, as we all know that uh, there is there is a there is a common vision between the India and UAE uh, in terms of the food security, which you are talking about. And uh, uh, as I understand, as we, because we are uh, the, the industry people, we know that there is there is a, around seven billion food corridor being set up by UAE for a for a long term vision, and uh, there is a, there is an interest which has already been shown, and there is investment which has already been shown. I believe, as uh, you know, I was hearing from. Uh, uh, Dr. Suresh, you know, it is sometimes we leave it only up to the MEUs, but I believe from industry we are talked about, we are told about, like you need to show actually what are the actionable uh, points with a timeline defined uh, decision making process. So I believe we're working in those directions in terms of the investment, which is uh, I believe is close to five billion, which is uh, there are various interests shown by the the, the the our partners in UAE to come to India. So so. There is there is a definite movement, I'll say, uh, in terms of uh, uh, investment from UAE to India, and from our side also, I'll say, from India to UAE, uh, there is a definite investment, and we have seen this investment from India to UAE in whether it's education sector or entertainment sector or or even you know a sports side, energy side. So there is an exchange of uh, uh, business uh, uh, from both the sides, but uh, I believe now. Uh, the food and agri business, uh, which is an area uh, from our perspective, feel that it needs some acceleration because uh, we have been talking about, we have been investing in some other areas, but this is an area uh, where I believe uh, we are really looking forward to a to a great extent uh, for that matter. And uh, and you know, just uh, 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 in terms of uh, what we say is as the India and UAE sharing a, a traditionally, uh, as we all you know hear, hear from all the panelists here. Traditionally, a very strong partner. We have a very strong friendship together. There is a people-to-people -people engagement. There is a, whether it's a cinema or entertainment or you know, sports or whatever. You know that brings a the good bond together. But I believe time for us now, as uh, the Excellency said, it's inflection point now. We really need to look at now for the conversions because there have been good talks. There have been good, uh, but I believe the critical part remains is the speed with which the decisions are being taken. Uh, because we, we heard about FTA being signed, so it's been a few years now. But I, I think it's pretty slow as far as we know. It needs to be really come to a speed where we can take some calls, some decisions can be taken on this. So so uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the important uh, aspect remains is that uh, there has to be a sort of a, an acceleration from the industry, from the government in terms of making some decisions because we need to take decisions because we are talking about a, a next, uh, you know, 20, 30 years food security system where there is a requirement of, uh, you know, I'll say uh, the need, I'll say for that matter, for us to really come to a real, uh, you know, the footprint or a, or a mega picture where we can be after 20, 30 years. Because what has happened is that in the last couple of decades, the entire landscape of processing has changed. If you look at it in India, for example, now, there is a shift of consumer from, you know, from a fresh vegetable, we are going to a more value-added food. We are going to a more processed food. Even we are going to a more ready-to-eat food. So, so that's, you know, that's there's a, there's a landscape has changed in India. And this landscape already exists in the other part, in UAE for that matter. So really, uh, now what has happened is, uh, I'll say that this is, I'll take it as a, as a plus point for us because uh, now our industry or our uh, setups here, our industries here, our entrepreneurs here are being aligned to this kind of uh, food habits, which actually will help them grow their exports into the UAE market. So that's, that's I take it as a, as a positive way we really, you know, can feel that uh, will help uh, all of us. Uh, touching on to the third point I was uh, looking at, you know, uh, again, uh, India, UAE, the trade machinery and whatever uh, business we can look at it. Uh, I think an uh, important point here is, uh, uh, when we uh, break this food and agri business into uh, small three segments, uh, one is the production, the processing, and the logistic part. So if you segmentize uh, these uh, three areas, uh, we have to learn from our side. You know, if you look at India, uh, we have. Uh, if you look at, we have. We are in the business of making a creating a value chain in terms of you know, for example, working on a cold chain because there's a huge wastage which is 
close to around 40 percent of harvest so so we have to learn from here and we are actually uh, working in that direction we are we are trying to create a complete value chain you know we have a concept from form to fork and i believe for for uae we can say from for uh, we say that form to port so form to fork to form to fort so these are the you know uh, some of the the challenges we are in india working upon and which i believe are going to be the challenges for ue as well as this because when they think about uh, you know uh, uh, having a resources outside their country and india when we look at it india is building up now we are actually having a large chain of cold storages we are having a large chain of uh, you know the, the the transportation areas we are having a large working upon uh, the the quality of the produce and all these factors actually are uh, leading us to take it uh, to ue for that matter uh, you know my my belief is that uh, there is a huge amount of uh, the business which is already happening between uh, india and ue in terms of some certain specific machinery for example uh, we have a lot of supplies of air compressors the refrigeration uh, plants over there the boilers the centrifuges for mill and a lot of other uh, you know like uh, items like spoons and forks all these things are there but there is still a, still an area which probably uh, we as industry can look at into ue for export from india just to align with the vision of that 500 billion what prime minister spoke about and similarly we can invite our uh, friends from the other side to come to india because we are coming up we are growing we are evolving so there is a opportunity from both the sides really come upon it and before i actually uh, you know uh, uh conclude uh, i would say that you know uh, the right combination along with the suitable enablers which we say that uh, be it a technology be it incentives or a tariff or labor etc we have to create those uh, you know resources or a recipe for uh, for this sector to sustain a, a success you know in the years good to go ahead and the last point but the least uh, i would like to touch is that you know we have heard about this uh, digitization i think uh, we have to really be uh, equipped with that we industry are actually getting geared up for that time is going to come when the refrigerator is going to tell the the butter factory okay get the butter my butter is exhausted a car is going to tell the service uh, you know uh, service center my car is having a problem the fuel please get it done so i think we are moving towards that uh, era we already seen this so digitization is going to be the key uh, for the future so let's let's look at that so so just to conclude and uh, say once again i think we need uh, we need the speed with which the decisions being, being being taken and we need to really look at the technology as one of the the key thing to be in thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much for your address indeed uh, digitization is critical and uh, uh, i'm sure india and uae can work a lot direction uh, i will now invite uh, mr abhishek podar vice chairman food and beverage sectoral committee trade promotion council of india and managing director nani agro foods to tell us about the opportunities in terms of investments in the food and beverage sector in india uh good afternoon to everyone uh, thanks uh, thanks to uh, his excellency dr aman puri to join us on this very important webinar between the trade links of uae and india and to all the uh, elite panelists who have spoken before me to give us insights on various aspects of our association and to all the participants who have taken time out to also uh, be part of this important webinar i would like to uh, split this uh, discussion into two one is the government intervention in the agricultural sector and the progress in the food uh, processing sector which is happening currently agriculture has been the critical growth driver for india's economy and provide and provides livelihood to its population across centuries and uh, obviously we could have seen this very evidently in during this covid times india has several agro climatic zones and a large and diverse agricultural production base making it one of leading producers of various agricultural commodities it is the second largest producer of rice wheat and other cereals and also ranks second in fruits and vegetables production india is currently has a share of 2.5% in global agricultural exports in 2020 and 1.4% of processed food products this only indicates the potential what we have 
the government's intervention to help leverage this potential india recognizes the need to build a robust food processing infrastructure and ensure active private sector participation the ministry of food processing industries has identified six focus areas the sectors supply chain infrastructure primary pro processing storage and distribution facilities linkages between production and processing addressing seasonality of operations and low capacity utilizations bridging institutional gaps in supply chains and the quality and safety products development and innovation the government has announced an agriculture export policy to double agriculture exports to 60 billion by 2022 some of the critical interventions identified by this policy are disinvestment of ex export baskets and markets both boosting of high value and value added agricultural exports promoting novel organic ethnic traditional and non traditional agri products exports institutional mechanisms for market access tackling trade barriers and integrating the global value chains the government of india has an allocation of 6000 crores for 2016 2020 under which 41 mega food parks 353 cold chain projects 63 agro processing clusters 292 processing units 63 backwards and forward linkage projects and six operation green projects have been approved the union cabinet recently as you all know has introduced and introduced a scheme pli in the food products for enhancing india's manufacturing capabilities and enhancing exports under atmanirbhar bharat the scheme has internal outlay of 10900 crores the progress now in the food sector is india's food processing industry engages in 1.9 1.93 million people across 40000 registered units with fixed capital of 32.75 billion and aggregate output of around 158.69 billion the gross value added in the food processing has increased from 1.3 lakh crores to 2.8 lakh crores in 5 years india's food processing sector is one of the largest in the world and its output is expected to reach 535 billion by the year 2025-2026 the 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 key sub segments of the industry in india are dairy meat marine cereals grains fruits vegetables beverages non alcoholic too and packaged food according to kpmg report cereals grains and all oil, oil seeds packaged foods and dairy accounts to around 87% of the food processing sector in india all sub sub sector sub segments are seeking strong growth in demand there is a huge scale up in opportunity of infrastructure in segments like dairy and fisheries and fruits and vegetables for processing storage cold chain logistics the sector has has fuels related to opportunities in food ingredients food processing equipments lab testing and packaging the indian food processing market is expected to double from 2020 to 2025 due to the massive pace of urbanization in india and add to the rise of the domestic income it is not it's not it's worth noting that india and uae have aimed to triple the volume of its food and aggregate sectors in the next 5 years dp world and dmmc dubai multi commodity center are already exploring tie ups with indian companies and farmers uae has already invested in eight food parks in madhya pradesh which could benefit 2 crore farmers and to create 20000 new jobs mr group is also on the lookout to invest in about 5 billion in mega food parks and similar facilities in various indian cities with the sizable indian population in uae it is especially lucrative market for fresh and processed food products from india the setting up of food processing tie ups in this regard promises to further the objectives of boosting food processing infrastructure in india prevent wastage 
promote value addition and innovation. This will ultimately be beneficial to both our countries. I hope uh, this has brought some insight to the food processing sector and uh, the government initiatives taken. Uh, thank you all so much. And uh, we hope uh, the op opportunities continues to grow for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, remarks and your insights. Uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Ashok Sethi, Director, Trade Promotion Council of India, who will prominently be talking about the F&B trade between India and UAE. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Virat. <clears throat> Your Excellency, Dr. Aman Puri, Council General of India, Dubai, in absentia, Mr. Kalimuti, Council Economic, Mr. Saleh Abdullah Luta, Chairman, FNB Manufacturing Business Group, Dubai, Mr. Suresh Kumar, Chairman, IBPC, Dubai, Mr. Abhishek Bodar, Vice Chairman, FNB Sectoral Committee, TPCI, Mr. R. Sangutuvan, Chairman of Sectoral Committee on Food. Processing and Packaging Technology, TPCI, and Mr. Sanjay Grover, Vice Chairman of the Sectoral Committee on Food Processing and Packaging Technology, TPCI. Today, I shall be presenting a snapshot on in India, UAE bilateral trade investments, and a brief look at the strengths and opportunities of as of present status. I know a lot has been spoken about uh, all this. I just wanted to identify a little on the micro and macro opportunities. Micro is something which I thought was important. Uh, Virat, I would be doing a little presentation. So. Is this okay, Virat? Virat? Yes, sir. This is fine. Is this okay? Yes. Sir. Right. Uh, gentlemen, um, I know that TPCI is uh, known across amongst all the panelists right now today, except maybe for uh, a little insight for uh, His Excellency, Dr. Aman Puri and Mr. Suresh Kumar and Mr. Luta. Uh, it's that uh, TPCI actually is an apex trade and investment promotion organization. It is notified in the foreign trade policy government of India. It is also recognized and supported by the Ministry of Commerce and Industries, Ministry of SMA, MSME, Ministry of External Affairs, and several state governments. We have around 2,500 active industry members from FNB, food processing technology, chemical and allied products, ceramics, IT telecom infrastructure, and service sectors. Uh, just to tell you that we have a very good sectorial committees and uh, very happy to note that a couple of the team leaders of these sectoral committees are already participating today. Uh, so we have a TPCI special sectoral committee for trade and investment promotion in food and beverage sector, i.e. that is sectoral committee on FNB, on FNB packaging technology. Then we have se separate sectors for chemical and allied products, ceramic products, and service, including tourism. Few top players in respective sectoral committees, again, part of our panelists is uh, Nani Agri-Foods, uh, Capital Ventures, then you have uh, Hamdard Britannia in the Food and Beverage Sectoral Committee. We have in the Technology, Technology Sectoral Committee, ITC, again present today, Kirloskar again present today, and uh, Uflex amongst others. We have in the Chemical and Allied Products Sectoral Committee, we have Tanya, GFL, Asian Paints, uh, Unitop, etc. Then we have in the Ceramic Sectoral Committee, AGL, Varmona, SEG, these are all big names. The objective was to uh, let you know that we have a very strong group supporting our objectives. Would like to mention to you that we have a very interesting uh, subjects to take care of today. And uh, one of them being that what exactly is the snap snapshot status between India and UAE? Now, let us uh, talk about the overall picture, the total snapshot. We've talked about these numbers. 
However, what I would like to point out here is that if you look at the exports to the UAE uh, between 2019 and 2018, there was a slight increase, but in 2020, for obvious reasons of pandemic, it dropped by 39%. The India's imports from UAE again rose in 2019 by 12%, but dropped by 21% due to pandemic. Pandemic, and however, the overall trade again dropped to around 30% in 2020, which shows that here is the now the trend forward that we must again raise the flag and go ahead and achieve these numbers which we are looking at. <clears throat> now, when we talk of the bilateral food and beverage trade outlook, as we know that we have excellent mutual relationships built on trust and cultural bonds, UAE imports from the world has been 14.56 billion, whereas from India it's 1.89 million already pointed out. That means India's share is 12.9%. So I do believe that here is a great opportunity for us to grow in this market share. And the food processing sector is something which needs to grow in leap and bounds. Now, let's look at the FNB trade. If you look at the FNB trade, the overall picture in 2019 was that there was a drop of about 14.6% from 2018. But again, in 2020, uh, even though there was pandemic, it grew by 6.6%, obvious reasons being the food and beverage industry. Interesting figure here at the very micro level, which I would like to point out, is that you know, I've touched base on the seven top products which UAE imports from India. Now, if you look at them, it's rice, it's shrimps and prawns, it's cashew, it's tobacco, meat, food preparations, cardamom, etc. What is interesting is that of the total imports by UAE from the world, around 66% is imported from India. On on shrimps and prawns, again, 69% from India. Huge market share. Cashew nuts, 70%. Now, what does this mean? This means that if you look at the overall picture, 43.7% of the total UAE imports are from India. Again, an opportunity which I'm trying to point out. Now, look at the UAE's exports to India. This is very interesting. If you look at the exports from India, the exports versus the world dates is 50% of their total exports is to India. The dry fruits is over 90%. Whiskey is around 70%. That shows this somehow gives me the scent of a re-export. And that means that this is a hub wherein from where a lot of product comes in into the UA but is exported to India, which is a great opportunity again for India to encash on this. And if you see the overall pictures, about 72% of these seven top products are coming from India. Now, what are the other potential products we're talking of which can come from India to UA? Is black fermented tea, oranges bananas in both fresh and dried form, mango, tomato fresh and chilled, fresh grapes, apples. We're doing excellent grapes now. Needless to say that a huge boost was given uh, under the auspices of the Indian Embassy in UAE in close coordination with Lulu chain stores and Uttar Pradesh and Kashmir Fruit Associations to promote both mango and Kashmiri apples. And I dare say this was a great success. Let's talk of the collaboration in the food and beverage sector. We've already talked about all this. Yes, uh, food and beverage is by far one of the most important manufacturing sectors in UAE. We should look at this very seriously. We are, and as very rightly pointed out, it is good to have understandings, but we must try to implement. 
Right now, UAE, we understand, ranks first in the GCC region and fourth globally in investment and business environments. And what are the key market drivers in UAE? It's the higher disposal income, growing demand in food services, wherein 60% of US population enjoys to eat out at malls and eateries, backed by very high levels of hygiene. The expanding retail chains like Lulu's and Carrefour's, groceries and eateries at lower levels propel rewarding opportunities for Indian FNB exporters who are now marketing their bulk and packaged products adhering to very high international standards, including an efficient supply chain process, which I know is under a lot of challenge right now, but we do hope to tide over it. We've talked about, again, this topic of a huge potential investment in India through the UAE food corridor. Yes, as mentioned, uh, 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 large organizations have, have been talking about uh, around 5 billion in mega food parks and 2 billion in contract farming. If this happens, it would be a giant step ahead. And I do hope it happens because in India, it gives us an opportunity to to generate around 200,000 jobs and benefit about 20 million farmers. So let's go fast forward on this, as very rightly pointed out. To note that 30% of India's agri produce goes waste for lack of appropriate infrastructure for storage, processing, and transportation. <clears throat> and I'm sure with the pandemic scenario easing, all this will take a, a positive step ahead. Just to mention that, you know, as a um, uh, TPCI, we organize something called the Indus Food. It's an annual global event organized by TPCI every year. And in March 2019, we had uh, a very strong delegation led by Mr. Khalifa Ahmad Ali. <clears throat> this was basically a food security team which visited the Indus Food, wherein we have a global interaction of about 400 very good exporters of Indian food and beverage industry and interfacing with over 1,000 hosted buyers from over 70 countries. And this particular delegation even met the uh, minister at that time for food processing and a very good interaction happened wherein opportunities of investing in food parks and uh, in food security was talked about. Here I'd like to mention that rice is a very important factor wherein we should talk about this. India grows basmati rice in a very big way. We have right now opportunities for basmati rice, which is the staple diet when it comes to rice in UAE, very well accepted. And there can be a great opportunities of storing them for food security, either in India or in UAE in silos you know that rice has a very long shelf life. Very interesting to mention, Mr. Suresh Kumar already touched base on this MOU, which uh, TPCI and IBPC are talking of signing off. I think this is huge synergy. And I do believe, as very rightly mentioned by him, we should delve into it very seriously and make sure that things happen at the ground level which would benefit the bilateral trade and investment opportunities between the two countries. I would like to conclude by saying that therefore having thrown light on food and beverage sector, which we believe can be tapped immediately to increase <clears throat> bilateral trade in the next couple of years. Indeed, let's pray that the pandemic blows away soon and we get back to business between two excellent, willing and friendly partners. And needless to say, the TPCI is always ready to participate as best possible to achieve our common objectives. Would like to point out here that uh, I think a lot has been talked about uh, trade between India in the food and beverage sector. There are some non-trade barriers which keep happening. Uh, because I keep traveling to the Middle East, I would like to bring this to the kind attention of His Excellency that probably in a different forum at another step, we can talk about it because we find that the Indian SMEs here are finding it very difficult to enter into the food and beverage retail chain because of something called listing fee, which is phenomenal. I just want to touch base on this and that's it. And thank you very much, sir.
Right. Thank you so much, Seti sir, and thank you all for your uh, remarks during this very interactive and interesting session, which definitely brings in uh, very important views and perspectives on how to, uh, you know, translate the intent and potential of FNB food uh, technology and food packaging, uh, you know, potential into action. I have some uh, questions uh, from our audiences for the esteemed panelists. Uh, first of all, I would like to come to Dr. Aman Puri, sir, this honorable CGI Dubai. Uh, sir, you have uh, very kindly, in fact, responded to quite a few questions in the chat itself. But I was intrigued by the potential which you talked about that the mainstream population presents for India's FNB segment. Uh, because this is something which we also, you know, consider and uh, deliberate on in other markets that India should be looking at the mainstream population rather than just its own diaspora. And could you please elaborate further because UAE seems to be a market where Indian companies can tap this potential and possibly even build strong F&B brands in, in a, a market which is very highly discerning and in a way it could reflect some of the advanced markets of the world where we actually want to reach. So, uh, what is your what would you like to advise Indian companies in terms of you know addressing this potential? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, like we mentioned that some of the Indian companies they could use Dubai as a testing ground, as somewhere they could try and reach out to the discerning consumer from different parts of the world, and because here we we are getting. Uh, food stuff and beverages imported from various parts of the world. So obviously we are getting it imported from Britain, from US, from many other parts of the world, different European economies. So it is actually a place where you have to compete with the best. What we have realized is that some of the Indian companies, their products are good, but their marketing and their packaging is very poor. So that is where they can actually, you know, uh, spend more effort understand the requirement of the consumer here and try to fill that gap. Then of course, coming uh, and spending time and effort and energy in an economy becomes very important to understand the needs of the consumer and try to address whatever is required. Thank you so much, sir, for that uh, very important guidance from your end. Uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar, uh, UAE has a very strong NRI committee accounting for, uh, sorry, community accounting for over 30% of its population. How do you view this role of this community in India's growing FNB trade and investment between two countries? And, you know, what has it, uh, how has it contributed so far? And how do you see this contribution going forward? I think one can look at this uh, question from a few perspectives. I mean, the 3.5 million strong Indian community is also, uh, you know, a high value consumption uh, opportunity yeah, to, to be addressed by, you know, Indian FMB sector uh, to start with. Uh, and so from a margin, business margin perspective, I think this, uh, this high value community could be quite, uh, quite a lucrative opportunity to address. Secondly, uh, many of the community members, especially some of the senior elders, have been here long enough. I've had very close personal relationship with the leadership here. And that again uh, acts as a conduit or as a catalyst for forging relationships, setting up uh, establishments here on the ground, uh, so the NRIs could, some of the NRIs could be uh, quite useful from that perspective, not just as sounding boards, but even, you know, many of them are wealthy. It's probably uh, one of the wealthiest segments uh, for any nationality in the UAE, in, you know, so they, some of the Indian NRIs. And so many of them have, therefore, the same level of capital surpluses, uh, you know, on, in a percentage term that you find in the country as a whole. Uh, and they are looking for good opportunities, strategic opportunities, uh, both in India and here. So uh, the value chain can therefore extend to both geographies uh, through uh, the benefit of NRIs who have uh, 
you know, clearly uh, greater connectivity and possibly better ability to, uh, you know, cope with uh, unique business needs, uh, you know, and how to manage the system, the environment more efficiently than many other nationalities. <clears throat> and I think thirdly, uh, you mentioned historically what has been, uh, I mean, Lulu you mentioned earlier, or Mr. Sanjay, Ashok Sethi mentioned, Lulu is a prime example, you know, especially in the food and beverage uh, segment. Uh, not just Lulu, but there are a few others as well uh, who have clearly marked a niche. I was talking to uh, some of the global, you know, supermarket chains, uh, Carrefour, for instance, and they said the only competition that we fear is that of Lulu. So you have had Indian businessmen that uh, you know, uh, that have created that niche for themselves. And so that experience, those insights would be very valuable for anyone wanting to do business, whether in, in terms of trade or in terms of investments, bilateral investments in both directions. I think those would be very useful. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I will now come to Mr. R. Sengal uh, Sir, I'm taking a slight tangent here. Where, you know, what are the most important challenges in your view that the food pack packaging industry is currently tackling and how can India and UAE collaborate in this regard in your view? Uh, good afternoon. And uh, the most important issues currently uh, faced is uh, how do we reduce uh, the wastage in the food uh, uh, industry and the agri commodities. Uh, so, therefore, one of the key areas which uh, uh, you know opportunities uh, exist are uh, cold chain and refrigerated uh, storage facilities, warehousing. Uh, how do we strengthen those aspects? Uh, coming to specific to packaging, one of the key aspects uh, that industry is engaged is uh, how do we create sustainable uh solutions for food packaging industry food packaging uh, as a sector uh, in fact one of the participants have asked also in the question box can we eliminate uh, plastic packaging the answer is you cannot eliminate pack uh, plastic packaging for food industry and nobody in the world has found a solution for uh, that because of the unique opportunity that offers one, it is energy efficient. Uh, the flexible packaging is the most energy efficient uh, packaging. Contrary to the general perception, it must be more uh, intense in terms of energy usage. Um, that is one. And second is, if you have to achieve barrier properties that are required to preserve food over a longer self life, uh, there are no other better material available today. Uh, other than the plastic uh, packaging. Of course, there are improvements happening in terms of coatings, in terms of uh, uh, material substrates uh, and combinations. Uh, people are bringing it out in terms of uh, recyclable. The focus is on recycling, not eliminating the packaging. Uh, the key issue is uh, that how do we create infrastructure for uh, in our municipal or town panchayats, uh, how do we create uh, opportunities and uh, how do we collect these uh, packaging waste and uh, recycle them? That is the focus. So therefore, the focus is on recycling and sustainability, the compostable packaging that uh, can be brought about. So those are the areas which are uh, uh, key focus point for the packaging industry, uh, in particular to food packaging. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would now like to come to Mr. Sanjay Grover. Sir, uh, what are the critical food technology areas where Indian companies are already achieving global competitiveness? And what in your view should, uh, what kind of collaboration and investment opportunities should global food tech and by that extension, UAE food tech uh, companies be exploring in India? Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for this. Uh, I think it's a very pertinent uh, question. Uh, to begin with, uh, you know, I will I will start uh, with, a, with, a, with a good note in the sense like, you know, uh, if you look at uh, what has happened in UAE in terms of imports of machinery from India and with respect to the, the food processing side, I believe uh, 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 it has increased 
reserve is their import from the world market. So now that is a direct indication that we as Indian companies, as Indian manufacturers, are now trying to demonstrate that we are also going to be in competition with the global competition. Because I myself is from you know the same background, so I know uh, what uh, what is happening in the, in the overseas markets and uh, how the acceptance is being increased over a period of time. Uh, there is a, there is a background to this that we as Indian organizations or Indian uh, entrepreneurs we are, we are really working on you know uh, what they call as uh, the general term is a quality, but uh, I think it's, it's 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 a big term to be really uh, talked about the quality in terms of the product, in terms of the people, in terms of the the surroundings in terms of the environment. So, so a lot of things to talk about it. But uh, coming to the point is that, you know, uh, the, the, the good part is Indian market share has increased with respect to export to UAE for our food processing businesses compared to what they, the, they used to import from the rest of the market. But still, on the hindsight, uh, if you look at it, we are still at a very, uh, I'll say, a very minuscule uh, a market share of around 5%, which I believe there's a huge gap of 90-95%, which we have an opportunity to really look at it. And uh, when you talk to the, you know, talk about some uh, specific machinery technology you talked about, as I mentioned in my talk also, you know, India is learning from its, uh, you know, uh, from its experience in terms of the, the wastages to be, you know, to mitigate the wastage or to minimize the wastage. Uh, as I said uh, in my talk also that there is a, there is a huge amount of wastage in terms of harvest uh, produce. So we are looking at developing a, a value chain from the farm, you know, in terms of having a preservation or in setting up an infrastructure of maybe cold storages for that matter, uh, maybe in terms of setting up uh, logistics or uh, transportation, which is again a conditioned transportation, uh, not only by road, even now by rail also is a new concept, which is which is there already in India. So, so there is a whole lot of things which are being, you know, worked upon which we believe, because we are talking about today, so which we believe are of a global uh, competitiveness. And this, along with our experience of handling variety of uh, food products, gives us an edge in the overseas market uh, for certain products. At least, uh, as I mentioned, you know, there are a lot of other product lines we have been focusing upon, whether it's, it's, a, it's a boiler side or a compressor side or a refrigeration side. Or centrifuges. So there is a lot of things which have been developed over here, which have been accepted, which have been appreciated in the overseas market. So that's that's my call on this. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your views. Uh, I will now come to uh, Mr. Abhishek Podar. Uh, sir, as uh, we see, Indian companies are uh, rightly, as mentioned and discussed, developing their food processing capabilities. How do you expect this sector to contribute to exports in the coming years? And I mean, how, how, how is it performing already? Also, you can give us insight on that. And which segments look most promising under this broad ambit of processed food products? Good afternoon to all once again. Indian exports of agriculture, horticulture, products and processed foods to more than 100 countries, regions with major exports to Middle East, Southeast Asia, SAC countries, the European Union, and the United States of America. Presently, India shares a high value and a value added agriculture produce within the export basket stands at less than 15%. However, India has a strategic geographic location, which gives it unique advantage when it comes to exports. The country has convenient connectivity to Europe, Middle East, Africa, West Coast, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and the Eastern Coast. Indian ex exports of processed food to the world in 2020 were recorded at 12.65 billion, surging from 11.48 billion in 2019. Its growth rate of exports for processed food at 8.3 remains significantly higher than world's average growth rate of 0.65% for the past three years and will still only touching the tip of the iceberg. Major sub-segments with promising prospects of exports to the world is ready to eat packaged food, organic foods, infant food product prepared, baby foods, processed dairy products, processed fish and marine products, 
alcoholic beverages, snacks, and confectionery. We also see the need to consume healthier food has emerged during the period of the pandemic. There is growing market with the tendency to consume foodstuffs with the reduced salt, calories, and sugar content. This could be beneficial for exports of fruits and vegetables, green tea, spices, Ayurvedic supplements in the coming years to come. Of course, we have to work very hard on some critical areas to scale up our international footprints as India aspires to do so. These include testing and certification of infrastructure, signing of FTAs with key partners, safety and hygienic norms, investing in digitalized supply chains, smart warehousing and logistics, cold storage capacities, and other advanced food processing technologies. At the same time, we must note, overseas investments in food processing facilities may be an option for Indian companies to consider due to the rise in preference of localized food supply post-COVID. This strategy can have long-term benefits as it helps Indian companies to be closer to the markets, build their brands, and understand consumer requirements better. Thanks, uh, Virat. Right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, do we have any other remarks from the panelists as just as we are about to close? Uh, anything anybody would like to share? Okay, uh, so uh, with this, we would now like to conclude this uh, very interesting, engaging and informative webinar. I sincerely thank all the panelists for taking the time out and sharing these wonderful views with us. And uh, we will uh, look forward to taking these up in our uh, discussions, deliberations, and our efforts to enhance India's vital trade and investment with the uh, UAE. Uh, thank you all to the attendees also for making this a very engaging webinar and sharing their questions and insights. And with uh, everybody's permission, therefore, I bring this session to a close. Thank you so much once again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.